recording. All right. Um, so we are going to talk about getting moving in Grava Designer today. So I'm going to make, just want to review our total from the ground up getting Grava Designer world rolling. So let me pull this up. Um, so let's go over here. First things first, I need to make an account. I don't know if I'm logged in on here. So I'm going to start now. I guess I am logged in. Great. Oh, I guess I'm not. So I'm going to continue with Google. Uh, my ghost things information. Crap, what is on my face? This thing is crazy. Okay. Let me just pull that back up. For some reason, it's very little. Okay, so I got Grava Designer. I'm just going to make this big. First thing we need to do is make a new document. So I'm going to click the print button and I'm going to use US letter landscape. I prefer a wide short uh, document, but if you prefer a narrow long, whatever, that's up to you. I prefer the landscape because that's going to give us this. Okay. Now, what I need to do from here is place a Reference image. Since we're using this for logo tracing, we're using this to just get our bearings with the pen tool. I just need to place my thing. So I'm going to hit File, Import, Place Image. That's going to let me place a reference on the screen and lock it so I can draw over it. So place image. DSA2, uh, Vector Practice. I'm going to use the Chrome logo because that's the one I have downloaded. But if you're on your Chromebook, it'll open up your Google Drive and you can go into the vector practice folder that is linked in the classroom in the vector practice material and the vector practice um, assignment for logo tracing assignment. There's two, there's two places where the vector practice folder is linked uh, and there's instructions on the assignment to let you know what you need to do. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna open the Chrome logo. Oh, if you are on your PC, then you do need to um, download it. So I downloaded this here. And this is a little big for me because I'm, it's just taking up a lot of the space. So what I want to do is make it smaller. So I'm going to grab my corner here and hold the shift button and scale it down. Okay, so we're scaled down. Now right now we can tell I can move this around, but I don't want to be able to move it around. I want to make sure that it is in place and done. So over here on the layer panel over on the left, we have our Chrome logo. So if I click that, we can see it. Now every time we draw a shape with the pen tool, it'll create a new object in the layer panel. But I don't want to be able to move my Chrome logo so I can you know, move it around freely, or move my, my pen tool things around freely. So I'm gonna click this little lock, this little padlock icon and lock it. So now, if I try to move it, I cannot. So that's step one. Play, well, step two, I guess. Place your image, lock it. Now I'm gonna come over to the top here and I'm gonna grab the pen tool. The pen tool is a, the tool that we've been using for a while. It's going to let us create very crisp shapes. Now, just like we were doing in the, uh, just like we were doing in the pen tool game, you have to try your best to use the least amount of nodes for something that you can possibly use. So I'm gonna grab here, this here. Before I get started with it, I need to set myself up here, okay? So, over here, I have my fills and borders. Now, in Illustrator, these are called fills and stroke, but in Gravit, it's uh, fill and border. Okay, so, the border is the outline of the shape that you are creating. So, if I, oh, I didn't, I, I screwed that up. Lock, if I, with the pen tool, Create this shape, you can see it has a black outline and a white inside. Okay, so my right now my border is black and my inside, my fill, is white. So I don't want that actually. I want a transparent fill so I can see my logo underneath of it, and I want a bright color for the border so I can get myself going. So I'm going to go to the opacity over here right here on my fill, and I'm gonna drag it all the way down to zero. I don't wanna fill at all. Now I'm just gonna click this black circle over here by borders, 
and I'm going to drag it over to the right. Okay. Now, last thing I want to do is just increase my border width to like five, four, or five, whatever. Um, that's just to get a little, a little heavier line, give you a little bit of wiggle room in creating this logo. Okay, now I'm ready to start making this logo. So I'm going to click here. Now, remember, a single click just makes a no curve straight line. When I click and drag, that makes a straight line. So I'm going to click and drag, and that makes a curve. So I'm click and drag until I get this curve here. Okay. So let me let me let me do that a little zoomed in. Click and drag until my curve lines up essentially. Okay. Now, since my next one has a sharp corner into a curve, that's going to mean I need to lock my back handle into my front handle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be a little tricky here. I'm going to lock, I'm going to click and click and hold, but I'm not going to move the mouse. And before I move the mouse at all, I'm going to hold the option key. What that's going to do is just give me a front handle. Okay, I'll save my files. Sorry about that. So that's, that just gives me a front handle. So I don't have any back handle here, just front. Now I can do this again over here. Try my best to get it to, to fit, but I'm not really worried about it. Sorry. Jordan Park, please report to the main office. Jordan Park, please report to the main office. Great. Thank you, Jordan Parks. Okay, now, since this is another curve into a sharp corner, sharp corner, I'm just going to drag my, my handle out, hold the alt, alt key again, and point my front handle in the direction I want my line to be going. And then I'll finish the curve. Now, you may be looking at this and going, Mr. Spratlin, that curve sucks. It's not matched at all. It's This is terrible. That's okay. Because what I'm going to do is something that the pen tool game does not allow us to do, and that is edit our curve after the fact. So I'm going to grab my pointer tool up here. I'm going to double click my shape. And this is going to let me edit my curve a little more. Okay, so I just need to get it as close as possible. Just tweaking it a little bit, seeing what we got. That looks good. Now I got my curve. Okay, so using the pointer tool or the sub select tool lets us edit our handles as much as we want. Okay, now when I grab my pen tool again, we're going to do the next thing. So I'm just going to do the circle. Ooh, that's not what I wanted. Okay, that's. Having, I'm really having a day here. Okay, it's a little wonky, but you know, it does its job. Oop, didn't want to, not want to do that. So add a little bit. That's also not really what I want. You know, it's a little funky, but circles are circles. Okay, so we're just, right now, we're just using the pen tool to try our best and trace this logo as close as possible to its reference. Okay, now we're gonna pretend that I'm done. I don't know what that is. We're gonna pretend that I'm done here. Let me cut that. Um, you know what? We're gonna just, you know, cheat a little bit. Don't do this when you're doing your logos. It's important that you get a handle on how to trace these things and vector stuff out, but I want to make sure I get done faster so I can teach you how to finish this off. Okay. Also, when we're doing our actual logos in class, copying and pasting is just fine um, because you want to make sure it's all good. Now, I'm done. I have all my things traced. I'm going to hide my reference so I can see my logo in, or my trace logo in entirety without a reference behind it. I'm going to click this little floppy disk uh, thing here. What? I don't want to be on the cloud. I want my file. 
see. Why is it giving me cloud content? I don't want to be in the cloud. There we go. No, I don't want to be in the cloud. That's really unfortunate. So you're going to save uh, to file and download file. So you can just download your file and hit save. And now I'm going to say Google Trace. Okay, done. Now I can take that, take that with my other seven logos and then submit that. Okay, this is a little bit of a long video, so I apologize for that. Um, so yeah, um, I know that we're using Gravit, and it's not the greatest program in the world. I I totally understand that, but it is a very good alternative to Illustrator when we are at home. So I'll make another one of these for Illustrator. But I want to make sure that we all have some semblance of uh, experience in Gravit so when we're switching back and forth, we can all operate on that well. Okay? Um, other than that, keep at it. If you have questions, let me know. Stop recording.